Okay, so we're going to create this sphere drawing. Here's our standard uh, settings here in our new document. And here's our new document. So we're going to start off. We're going to create an ellipse here with our selection tool. And except we want it to be a perfect circle, of course, because we're drawing a sphere. So I'm going to hold the shift button down. Depending on your settings, you may have to let go of the shift button to get it to be perfectly round. Okay? We're going to draw that, and we're going to fill it in with a gradient. Um, don't pick any of these really bright colors in the corners here. Okay? We want to pick uh, a color sort of in this middle, more of a mid-tone range. We're going to add in the highlights and the shadows later. So I'm going to pick something like this. And for my background color, I'm going to sample this color. I'm going to just pick a darker version of that same color. You can pick a slightly different uh, color if you want, but we want to keep it roughly the same, okay? Something like that. And let's move this up. And we're going to use this radial gradient. First, let's check out this real quick. Okay, that looks okay. But really, we want to be using this radial gradient. So let's undo that. And what we're trying to do is create the illusion of three dimensions, three dimensional space on a flat surface here. And we're going to do that by shading, adding darks and lights, midtones, highlights, shadows. Some of those are the same thing, I realize that's okay. All right, so we're going to be doing something like this. We want this to look like it's round. All right, and at this point, maybe you decide, maybe you want this a little darker, we could do that. Okay, maybe you want to make this a little bit lighter. You can do that too. Depends what you want it to look like, okay? So after this, uh, what we're really going to do to kind of push this now is use our burn or dodge tool here. And again, this the icon might look like the sponge or the dodge tool up there. So we're going to use the burn tool. Important um, to consider is whether you have shadows, midtones, or highlights. If you're trying to make the darker areas dark, you could set it on the shadow setting. If you're trying to make the lighter areas light, you can set it on the highlights. I'm going to keep mine on midtones because mostly that's what we've got. But if it's not working for what you want, you could think about changing that. The other thing that's important is we do not want a hard brush like this. You can see the edges are very hard. Uh, we want a soft edged brush. It doesn't really matter what size. We can change the size later, right? And in fact, we want quite a large brush. Um, so this is going to be, I'm using the burn tool here, so it's going to make it darker. Okay, so I want to use the feathered edge, the soft edge of this brush, and Uh, I'm going to go around the edge here and make this part darker. And this is really going to kind of make it kind of pop and stand out and look much more rounded. All right, that looks pretty good. This might be a little dark here. Now I want to caution you against going, well, I'm going to make it lighter and use this one. Okay, now the color is black. It's just going to make the black lighter, so which will be gray. It's not going to turn it back into blue. Once it's black, it's black. Okay, so you'd have to edit, undo, and go backwards. Let's leave it like that for, for now. I think that looks all right. Now we're going to take our dodge tool, which will make it lighter. And again, use a soft brush. Let's, for, the, for both of these, the reason we don't want to use a hard brush is like this, you're going to see the edges of our thing. Now, that looks maybe kind of cool, but edit, undo, undo, undo. That's not what we're going for. Soft brush using the square brackets. Okay. We're going to create solid lighter highlight. And that looks a little bright. It's going too quick. I'm going to dial the exposure back on this. Okay. I don't want to get a little crazy hot spot there. Okay. 
And this color choice that I've got here, I find I think it's particularly difficult to uh, to get this to do what I want it to do. In hindsight, I think I would choose a different color. But it doesn't look too. It's a little bit bright, but I'm gonna kind of go with it. All right. And our next step here is to create a shadow on the ground. We're going to use our ellipse tool here. We're going to create a shape like this. If it's in the wrong spot, don't worry, we can move it later. We can move it now. If, our, if we have this set to new selection, I can just click in there and move it, actually. Um, that's not an option if it's on add, right? Because possibly we would want it to do something like that, right? So when it's on new. We can move this around. On a new layer, we're going to fill this in. Let's go back to our default colors, the gradient, from our foreground color to transparent. I want to go from black to a transparent color. And I don't want it to go like this because now this whole section is transparent. Undo that. Bring it outside of your circle. Okay, so it's still transparent, translucent here, but not completely gone. Right, I'm going to deselect that, and this looks okay, except the shadow is very hard edge. Let's put this underneath this, that will help. And if we don't want this very hard edge like this, we could blur it, we know that. Uh, but I want to use this opportunity, let's look at a different technique here. Okay, let's go back again here with our ellipse tool. I'm going to deselect this. Now before we start drawing this, I'm going to use this feathering option. How many pixels you want it feathered will be determined partly by your resolution of your image, of course. Um, let's go like this. We'll take our gradient tool and use the G button to switch over here. And on a new layer, always do that. Again, same thing. Deselect it, take our move tool, let's move this in place, put this underneath, and I think that'll look okay once we have a, an actual background in there, which we're going to do right now. I'm going to command and click to make a new layer. We'll create a new one underneath instead of over top. And let's switch to this tool here. We're going to create a horizon line. This is going to be our ground. So we can either go for uh, like some green grass, but I think we'll go for uh, like a desert kind of look here, a brownie orange. Okay. And let's sample this one, something like this, light, and actually I think I'm going for maybe a darker version like that. Okay, this time I'm going to use the linear gradient, and um, another thing that we can do to make things look three-dimensional, I'll switch this back to foreground and background color, is we want our background to go from light to dark or light dark to light, depending on uh, lots of things, but uh, basically the lighting and time of day and stuff. Um, but generally, the colors get lighter as they get further away and less detailed. So generally, we're going to go for something kind of like this, right? And again, if we wanted to, we could even make that a little lighter. Um, this is our linear gradient. This will go in any direction. If you want to go perfectly straight up and down, hold the shift key. Like that. Okay, I'm going to deselect. And in order to make this look even more three dimensional, I'm going to take this and add some texture. We're going to use uh, in the texture filter, texture, texturizer. And there's different options here. We can make bricks. Because I'm going for kind of a deserty look here, I'm going to use this sandstone. We can play with the scale and the relief of these things. That we lose a lot of the color that we're going for there, so I'm going to dial that back a bit. And keep the scale kind of fairly large. I'm looking at the foreground here. I want to get that looking kind of the way I want it. And the background, now right now, 
this looks very flat because uh, we've got two conflicting things happening. One, the color is getting lighter, which makes it look three-dimensional, but the texture is the same in the foreground as it is in the background, the same size. That does not do what we want it to do. Um, and because of that, we've got a little trick here. We're going to go image, transform, perspective. Now I'm going to zoom out like this so that I've got room to move my mouse out this way. Okay. Notice this is quite wide. All right. And now when we look at our texture, we're going to see it looks flatter, which is what we want. It looks larger in the foreground, smaller in the background. You could even, if you wanted, we could hit this with a little bit of a blur in the background here. Let's do this real quick, like that, just to make it look like there's less detail back there. Okay, another new layer. Behind that, we're going to make a sky. So what color do we want our sky? I'm going to go for a fairly typical kind of blue and white sky here. White clouds, I should say. At least almost white. And this is a cool one. We're going to go filter. Render clouds. Let's turn this off just so we can see here. We've got clouds. Now when we turn these on, we're not seeing very much of the clouds. And again, the clouds look flat, like we're laying down on our back looking straight up at the sky, looking for like shapes in the clouds, if you've ever done that. So again, which is cool, but not what we want. We want to do the same perspective effect. We don't need to add a filter to, uh, to add texture to this. The texture is already there, essentially. It's just the clouds. So we're going to stretch this out. And now it looks like the clouds here are larger than the ones down here. And we've got this illusion of three dimensions. Now, again, the problem, when I cover this up, we're losing the real compression of space here that's happening right at the bottom down here. And this is really where it starts to, the contrast between the size of this cloud and the size of these clouds is what gives us that three dimensional look. So what we need to do is bring this up in here like this. And if you've blurred the edge, make sure you pull it down below that blur so that you don't see a little gap in between there. Okay. And now, We've got something that's looking okay here. I'm going to select both of these. Shift click the top one, shift click the bottom one. Move it over here. Uh, a little trick, option key, click and drag to duplicate it or right click, duplicate layers. Okay. And while they're both selected, I'm going to make them smaller. Put this one back here. Okay, I'm going to, again, whoops, now we're going to make sure we're moving the right shadows with the right spheres here. This one belongs over here. I'm going to make this one smaller as well. And this one's going to be over here. Now, this is not quite what we want because uh, they're kind of backwards. We want to have things overlapping with each other to create the illusion of three dimensions, but they need to be needs to be happening in the right order. Right? Like that. Ah, the bell ring. All right. Last thing we're going to do, adjust lighting, sorry, adjust color, enhance adjust color, adjust hue saturation. I'm just going to make these three different colors to show that we know how to do this. Command U brings up that same dialog. The other thing is um, things are less saturated as they're further away. Okay, so we're gonna kind of desaturate them a little bit as well, which will help with our illusion of three-dimensional space here. All right, so here's our finished product. We maybe wanna make this one look a little smaller. You can space these out a little bit, but we do want to have some overlapping because to show that we understand that concept. 
All right, you can do it this way maybe. Uh, the other thing, this shadow kind of moves. You want them both on the same size, right? All right.